My name is Quentin Goodbody. I'm president of the Lady Smith and District Historical Society, which is hosting this meeting. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. <coughs> I'd like to acknowledge that we're located on the traditional territory of the Salinas First Nation on the eastern shores of central Vancouver Island, Canada, and that we live, work, and play on their unceded lands. The Ladysmith and District Historical Society acts as a steward of local heritage and strives through the excellence and inclusiveness of its programs to be a major contributor to community, education, and tourism. Tonight's talk is part of the Society's Historically Speaking talk series. Subjects within this series relate not only to local heritage, but also to current affairs affecting the community, placing them in their historical context so the present situation can be understood and a path to the future better envisaged. Tonight's talk is about a young, about a young ladysmith airman of note, Ray Conti. It's a story of youth, bravery, cutting edge technology and tragedy. Here to present it to us is Kathy Gilroy, who has long been involved with the Ladysmith Air Cadets. Welcome, Kathy, and I hand the screen over to you. Thank you, Quentin. Um, hello, everyone. I would like to take a moment to thank the Ladysmith Historical Society for hosting this talk series, Historically Speaking, and for providing me with the opportunity to come out this evening to tell you a story about a truly remarkable young man. By way of introduction, my name is Kathy Gilroy and I'm a civilian volunteer with the local Air Ladysmith Air Cadet Squadron 257 Parallel Unit. In 2005, my son enrolled in Air Cadets. I became active with the parent committee. One of the pressing tasks was to clean up the cadet hall. There were stacks of boxes containing photos, newspaper clippings, and documents, and everything needed to be sorted out. The plan was to digitize the entire collection, then hand off the originals to the Ladysmith archives. So as I set about putting things in order, I started to come across newspaper clippings about this young airman, Ray Conti. Thankfully for me, the boxes were labeled in chronological order, so the story gradually unfolded as I went through the material. And I was so taken with this story, I wondered why there wasn't more known about him. In 2008, 257 Squadron commemorated its 65th anniversary. So while organizing a community celebration, we thought what a great idea to feature the story of Ray Conti. To prepare for this, I reached out to the community to see if there was anyone around who remembered him, perhaps high school friends or family members, and lo and behold, there were still folks in town who had known him well. I set up a few interviews, and I checked out the archives, I looked through the old Ladysmith High School yearbook, Spine Cop, and old newspapers to try and fill in the details of his life. I added whatever military history information that I could find online. The 65th event was a great success and we were very grateful to then Mayor Hutchins for reading his story and for presenting the slideshow. This is the presentation from 2008, although in preparation for this talk, I have added a lot more information. In 1939, the Air Cadet League of Canada was formed to assist in the development of a national youth program to train young men for the Air Force. Leaders were appointed to the national committees and in 1941, BC was granted its charter. The BC Department of Education in partnership with the Air Cadet League implemented high school cadet courses across British Columbia. High school principals and teachers underwent officer training to become instructors and commanding officers of their units. Lady Smith High School introduced its program in 1942 and received its charter in 1943. The Air Cadet program became part of the regular curriculum with classes in meteorology, air flight, Morse code, and drill. 
and it was a very popular course. Many young male students, including Ray Conti, were happy and excited to join up. So who was Ray Conti? Ray was a local lad who made aviation history by flying one of the first F-86 fighter jets across the Atlantic. Raymond Conti was born on November 6, 1930, and was the only son of Violet and Johnny Conti of 4th Avenue Extension Ladysmith. His cousin, Lorraine Sass, recalls that Ray was particularly close to his grandma Conti. Ray attended Catholic school in his early years and then went to Lady Smith High School until his senior matriculation. He joined the Lady Smith High School Air Cadets and continued as a cadet until his graduation in 1949. Ray, along with many other young high school students, joined the Air Cadets, which was a regular course at the high school, as I mentioned, and at that time many young men were joining the cadets to prepare for a career in the forces. It was considered to be one's duty to enlist. World War II had just ended, but things were still very much unsettled worldwide. Despite the unrest, Ray and his friends still managed to have a normal life in doing many of the things that young people do today. Ray was athletic and was particularly skilled in soccer and basketball. His friend Doug Brown remembered Ray as always whistling. He said, you could hear him coming. Ray also loved to sing. A quote from the Spinecop High School Annual 1945-1946 Grade 10A describes Ray in this way. With a voice that makes the rafters ring, he is the successor to Frankie and Bing. And Spine Cop of 1946-47 grade 11 says of Raymond Conti, although he thinks he is quite a brain, all you get from him is a vocal refrain. Several of Ray's friends have remarked that he liked to have a good time and was very popular with the girls. From Spine Cop 1947-48 grade 12, we read, Blessed are the joymakers. Romeo Ray takes part in all Lady Smith High School activities. He is an active participant in the Fish and Game Club, basketball, football, and volleyball. Ray did extremely well in cadets and was the first Lady Smith Air Cadet to receive his wings. They were presented at an official ceremony, which was held at the Cenotaph. Incidentally, the Cenotaph at that time was located at First Avenue and Gattaker, where the Royal Bank is today. This was 1949. Ray had excelled at his flight training courses, which he had taken several months before placing forth in the province. His wings were presented by Flight Lieutenant J.A. Stevens of the Royal Canadian Air Force. The ceremony was well attended by the Lady Smith High School cadets all school students and the mayor, Leonard Ryan. Ray graduated in 1949, the same year that he earned his wings. And it must have been a wonderful year for Ray Conti, as a spine cough reads. If Ray is not singing or telling a tale, you will find him in the lab. He is our star cadet and enthusiastic about all sports. After high school, Ray went to work at the Shimana Sawmill with his good friend, Ray Johnson. He applied to the Royal Canadian Air Force and was accepted on his second try. He entered training to become a jet fighter pilot. He formally enlisted on April 20th, 1950 in Victoria, BC. So a couple of points of interest. In 1948, the Canadian government decided to equip the Royal Canadian Air Force with the F-86 Sabre jet. The Canada Air Company of Montreal, Quebec was awarded a contract to initially produce a batch of 10 aircraft. However, with the onset of the Korean War and the Cold War, the plan changed. A production batch of 100 aircraft was rolled out with the Sabre project receiving its classification as CL-13.
In support of the newly formed North Atlantic Treaty Organization, many of these aircraft were shipped by sea to Europe. However, a decision was made to send a flight mission. Meanwhile, over in the UK in 1951, the North Luffenham Air Base was transferred to the Royal Canadian Air Force to act as the base for the number one fighter wing, the first Canadian NATO base in Europe. It became home to squadrons 410, 439, and 441 until they were relocated to other parts of Europe a few years later. In 1951, Ray Conti received his commission at the RCAF Flight Training Centre in Centralia, Ontario. He again excelled at his training, qualifying as one of four flight officers from BC to join the 439 Squadron stationed out of Uplands, Ottawa. He was selected to train on the new F-86 Sabre jets. This was an elite position. Ray was to join a team of Canadian pilots whose mission was to fly the F-86 jets to Luffenham, England. The 439 Sabretooth Tiger Squadron made aviation history. When they flew the first jet fighter aircraft across the Atlantic, they left Uplands Airport on the 30th of May, 1952 at 9.24 Eastern Standard Time. The operation was Mission Leapfrog 1, led by squadron leader C.C. Bricker, with stops in Bagotville, Quebec, Goose Bay, Newfoundland, then via Greenland, Iceland, and Scotland to Luffenham, where they joined 410 and 441 squadrons and waiting ground crews. This was a time of great excitement. It was the beginning of the jet age. But now we receive difficult news. Flying Officer Conti had been training at Luffenham Air Base for only a short time when he was tragically lost at sea as a result of a training accident. He parachuted from his aircraft there was hope that he had been picked up by a passing fishing boat. But from the Book of Remembrance, Volume 1, we learn that while stationed at North Luffenham, England, 15036 Flying Officer Raymond Digger Conti of Ladysmith, British Columbia was killed when his Canadian F-86 Mark II Sabre serial number 19187 crashed into the North Sea while on a training exercise. From the Daily Diary of North Luffenham, 1st of July, 1952, we read, Flying Officer R.J. Conti, Flying Aircraft 19187, failed to return from a GCA practice flight and was reported missing. On the 2nd of July, 1952, no flying, no sign yet of Flying Officer R. Conti, who parachuted into the North Sea off Flamborough Head yesterday at 14.15 hours. Search parties of the RAF have been busily engaged in trying to find some trace of the missing pilot or aircraft with no success. Sports day was cancelled and the entire squadron stood down. Fourth of July, 1952. Flying Officer Conti, a 439 squadron not found and presumed dead. Search and rescue units of the Royal Air Force have ceased action to effect his recovery, no report. Second, 7th of July, 1952. Memorial service conducted for the late Flying Officer R. Conti, a 439 squadron in the Roman Catholic Chapel and the following is extracted from the 439 Squadron Diary. The 1st of July, 1952 was a black day. Flying Officer Raymond Digger Conti reported his compass was unserviceable, low on fuel, and he was preparing to abandon his aircraft. No trace has been found of either him or his aircraft. In the official report, 
The date is the 1st of July, 1952, time 1415 local time. Unit, Canadair Sabre II, F86E, owner operator, 439 Sabretooth Tiger Squadron RCAF, registration 19187, fatalities 1, occupant 1, aircraft damage written off beyond repair. Location, North Sea, 10 miles east of Flamborough Head, North Yorkshire. Phase en route, Nature Military, Departure Air Airport, RAF, North Luffenham, Rutland. Memorial service held for late Flying Officer R. Conti of 439 Squadron, OC attended with official representation. Flight Officer Raymond Conti was awaiting confirmation of his promotion to the rank of Lieutenant and the news came as a terrible shock to his parents and the community was devastated. Ray Conti would be greatly missed. Flying Officer R.J. Conti was formally struck off charge on the 29th of July, 1952. By coincidence, years later, his mother met Emile de Connick, a Lady Smith High School teacher and also the commanding officer of 257 Squadron. Mr. DeConnick had been serving with the Royal Belgian Air Force and had been involved in the search for her son. Mrs. Conti remarked that it was indeed a small world. The story has a sad ending, but it is also one of inspiration. Ray was an ordinary kid who did extraordinary things. He grew up in a small town, but he went on to become a pioneer in aviation. He served his country with great courage and is a credit to his family, to his Air Cadet Squadron, his school, and his entire community. It is difficult to sum up a life, to recount the details of lives lost as there were so many. But for those who have served and those who are serving, we thank you for your service unless we forget. So in closing, I have a couple of comments. Um, in 2008, a pledge was made by the town of Ladysmith to dedic dedicate a street or park in the name of Flying Officer Raymond Digger Conti. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, so moving forward, uh, it is one of my goals to honor this commitment. And a second thing, in researching memorial markers from the North Luffenham Air Base and other military sources, I've been un unsuccessful in locating anything dedicated to Flying Officer Conti. So the only reference I can find is from the Royal Canadian Air Force Graves 1951-52. Missing Airman, no grave in North Luffenham Churchyard, not sure where he is commemorated. Now my understanding is there was a plaque at the high school uh, for him. Um, I and I would need to follow up and ask about that. But if the family wishes, it might be a good time to consider a legacy tribute as a point of remembrance in perpetuity. So I would welcome anyone who may have known Ray, who may be a relative or a friend, family, friends, anyone who may have recollections or memorabilia, or just thoughts on this presentation, to feel free to contact me. Um, I can give you some contact information now, or I can wait till the end. Whatever. Facebook's always good. Facebook.com forward slash 257 Parallel Squadron. And you can reach me via messenger or email at ladysmithaircadets at yahoo.ca.